we'll do what we can to get through this. And this meeting is being recorded. I see that that started just now. Um, so please know that, you know, any comments, anything on video, um, that, you know, this, this will, be, um, will be recorded and made available to folks who couldn't be here. So, um, so just be aware of that. Um, one more note about meeting controls. So on your own device, so everyone on the call, you could just um, familiarize yourself with the mute and unmute function and the chat function. Um, you know, at the beginning of the meeting, if you aren't already familiar with that, uh, if you, on most, I can't describe what it looks like for everyone, but on most computers and phones, uh, those controls are toward the bottom of the screen. And so, um, so you, we will use those throughout the meeting. So, uh, so check that out now if you're not already familiar with it. And we will be um, we will be monitoring the chat throughout the meeting. So, all right, I'm going to. Um, uh, well, thank you. First of all, thank you to Dorit, Monica, and Creel, helping uh, helping gather us. They are going to be available throughout the meeting to help with um, help with the logistics. We're going to uh, uh, well. Yeah, anyway, thank you. You've done a lot of work prior to this point and are gonna to continue to, uh, to help during with the meeting administration. Um, I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, get the PowerPoint up. Oh, one more note on um, just on muting and unmuting. Uh, very points throughout the meeting, um, the host will be muting everyone and unmuting everyone. So, so please just keep an eye on that on your, your own connection because um, we, will, we will want to be able to use um, functionality and we'll also want to be able to mute everyone so that everyone can hear well. So, um, so just please be aware that we'll be using different, uh, um, you know, different modes throughout the meeting and uh, just be attentive to what can be heard and seen on your screen and on your connection. All right. So Doug, if you're available to do our opening reading. I am. Good morning, everyone. Our opening reading is taken from the Reverend Sarah Eileen Lawal, a uh, reading entitled, Seeking That Which Unites. Spirit of life and love, in this time of uncertainty, of fear and angst, our nation and our world holds its collective breath. In this time when rhetoric blusters about and words are used as weapons, our nation clenches its fists, tightens its shoulders, eyes squeeze shut. Some prepared for a fight. May we remember that we are a people of resilience. We have faced uncertainty before. We have weathered storms. We have been consumed by flames. We have risen like the phoenix from the ashes, and we will again. We, the people, may we remember our shared humanity, oh. our universal kinship, our interdependence, as we quench our fists and breathe together, breathing in love and breathing out peace. May we recognize the spark of the divine inside of all of us, even those we are not quite sure about. In this time of uncertainty, may we remember that the good will go on as we move forward together, we the people, seeking that which unites us with our arms reaching out wide for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. May love prevail, so may it be. Thank you, Doug. All right. So I'm going to review the agenda quickly. Um, so this is our, um, hang on a second, look. All right, um, we're gonna start off with, uh, so as, aside from the uh, Zoom logistics, which I imagine we will continue to talk about throughout the meeting, um, uh, we do have a, a formal rules of procedure um, adoption slide. We will um, move into that just to, you know, just to kind of center us as we're um, experiencing our first virtual parish meeting. 
Um, so, so we will have a few more words about that. Um, but before we get to that, um, so just a preview of the agenda. Um, first of all, um, the, the handouts, the things that we would normally hand out as you enter the auditorium. Um, it, just a bit, if, you, if you don't already have those, uh, the materials for the meeting are available on the same po po portion of the website where the link to this meeting was available. So there is a, there's a packet that has the budget, the minutes from the uh, last parish meeting, as well as um, bios for all of the candidates that will be electing today. So just taking a minute, um, you know, if you have any, if you don't have those, um, please comment in chat and someone will help you out with that. So the items on the agenda, we will be approving the minutes from the last parish meeting. Um, we have candidates to vote on for the Board of Trustees and the Foundation Board, and of course our Ministerial Search Committee. I uh, will be voting on our budget for the upcoming fiscal year, and we have an update from the stewardship team and from the foundation. Um, we'll give a little bit of background to catch everyone up on the process to create the Ministerial Search Committee, and we will vote on that group. Uh, at the end, just a few notes on some major transitions uh, involving our um, intern minister and our current and future interim ministers. All right, so just a few comments on how uh, we will uh, conduct this meeting. So this is our, um, this is our spring parish meeting. Uh, we are unable to meet in person for public and uh, personal safety reasons. So um, our bylaws do um, have a very broad allowance for meeting off campus if there are unusual circumstances. So we are in those unusual circumstances, <laughs> gathering virtually um, by phone and teleconference. Um, so as the first act of this meeting, we will, um, we will formally adopt these rules of procedure. Um, and this will also serve as a, a practice vote, <laughs> just to make sure everyone's um, uh, clear on process. Um, you know, so we are actually conducting our business meeting. And um, just to note, there's precedent for this. Um, a lot of congregations around the country are, are holding virtual meetings to, you know, to keep going with the calendar as normal. And um, also at the regional and national level, our um, regional, um, a regional conference, the Mid-America region held their most recent meeting virtually, including the business session. And the same thing will happen for GA um, next month in June, uh, toward the end of the month. GA will be all virtual, and that will include a business session as well. So we have established quorum. Uh, we have um, at least 70 members present, and I think we are well above that. Um, Monica, do we, have a, uh, do we have a sense of approximately how many members are, are present? Uh, I see 102 participants, but we are still furiously putting things into the sign-in, so um, we have more than 102 participants. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Or not. So just confirming that we, we do have quorum. Um, and you know, just to have kind of a, a blanket statement here, we are we're trying to keep the logistics as similar as possible to what we would do um, if we were in person. Um, and we will, you know, we will use the Zoom functionality as needed. And uh, so, so one of those functions that we know we want to use is the chat function. Um, we will, um, we have board members who will help moderate that discussion if there are questions later on or, or comments. Um, so for each item that we're voting on, um, I will read the motion. We have, you know, all the motions are, um, you know, pretty much prepared in advance and uh, I will call for a second and then we will ask for discussion and then we'll vote. Um, so as we would in person, um, please vote um, only if eligible, if you're, if you're a uh, currently participating member. And if you're on camera, if you can be seen, um, just raise your hand and we mean your actual hand, not the, uh, not the Zoom uh, button, that's a, that's a different feature. So um, when we get to that point, um, you know, as we would in the room, um, 
the we will we will just get a get a sense of where the yeas and nays are. And if you are on the phone, so during the voting, we will unmute everyone. So if you can be seen on camera, please just raise your hand. And if you are only on the phone and can't be seen on camera, please um, please vote out loud. Please say yay when those are called for and nay when those are called for. And uh, so that way we'll be able to hear the few people who are just on the phone only. Um, Creel or Monica, do we have a sense of how many folks are just on the phone where we can't uh, we can't see on, on camera? Approximately. If All right. Not sure if you heard my question, but we can. Uh, if you did, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I can hear you. I'm just counting. Okay, sure. Me too. I think I'm seeing six. Does that align with what you're seeing, Creel? It's hard because we've merged some people. Um, although, actually, no. I think it's only six. Creel, how does that sound to you? I don't know. I'm counting a lot more folks who don't have their videos turned on. I guess I don't know. Are you looking for phone numbers only, or folks I'm without a video on? You know what I'm seeing in participants, people that only have the telephone icon. Um, ah. I think those that have the video icon. I see. Yep. Just the telephone is quite a bit fewer. Yep. Although there might be a couple of people that have iPads that are showing up as just video. Um, so, I, Terry, I'd say we have less than 10. All right. Great. Just wanted to get a little bit of a sense of that. Um, and as we just did now, um, you know, we will um, we will just slow down if needed. If they, if we need to figure something out, um, if we need to figure out something uh, technically, or if there's any confusion, we'll just slow down and um, get through the agenda. So to to start off our our meeting, um, so I propose we adopt these rules of procedure as as just outlined in method of voting. Um, is there a is there a second to adopt the rules of procedure for this meeting? I second it. Uh, Alice Deliquest. Thank you, Alice. All right. So, are there any are there any questions before we get started? Just on the rules of procedure. Just on the. Um, the holding of our business meeting through Zoom teleconference and the method of voting. Are there any questions? Terry, I have a question. John, how does that Ella spell her last name, please? Delacus, D's and David, E L A Q U E S S. Rhymes with make a mess, Delacus. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. Thank you. Someone had a question? I have a question. Go ahead. When you're asking for votes, do you want us to speak or do you want us to hold up our hand? Hold up your hand. If you're on camera, hold up your hand. Okay. And when yeah. You, when you want to speak, do you want us to speak or hold up our hand? Um, I'd say first preference, if possible, enter questions and comments in the chat. Um, Creel, a member of the Board of Trustees, is going to compile those to help, um, you know, to help moderate that. Um, so that that's the first choice is is to use use chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions? Anything that's come in via chat? No, we're doing okay on the question side. Okay. All I right. will note that some people may not be technologically competent to use chat, in which case, talk. That's my yes. suggestion. If if they can't figure out how to chat. Right. Keep Keeping in mind that we've got, got a lot of people on the line, so please try to uh, um, please try to use chat if we can, so we can uh, so we can keep the meeting moving forward. Um, Terry, how about just a quick reminder to people that at the bottom of your Zoom screen, 
you might have to hover over it with your mouse to get the bottom um, the bottom ribbon to show up and there's literally a little uh, dialog box with the word chat underneath it and if you click that it will show a box that actually allows you to essentially text back and forth so it identifies who's texting or chatting and what they're saying and then it allows the staff to have a permanent record of not permanent but an actual written of record so it makes it easier for Creole and Monica and others to keep track of who's seconding for example or things like that Yes, thank you. All right, so let's so let's try out voting now. Um, if there are no other questions about the rules of procedure, um, so I move we um, adopt the rules of procedure as as presented on the screen here. Um, all in favor, if you are on camera, please raise your hand um, to vote yes. If you are on the phone. Please, please say yes verbally. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 I'm done. And Creel or Dorrit, I will let you notify the group when uh, you're ready to have folks lower their hands. Okay. Thanks. I have a, I have a question. Yes. The question I have is how do we know that you've recorded our voice when we just, everybody's saying yes? Well, um, votes will be by consent, uh, by uh, what's the parliamentary term, just, you know, sense, sense of the assembly unless we feel there's a need for a vote. Um, and, and counting would, would take more time, but we can do that if needed. Um, if um, if votes seem to be majority yeas, we won't need to count precise votes. And again, that's similar to what we do um, in person. We would have verbal yeas and nays. And so we're, we're trying to replicate that here. I see, thank you. Terry? Okay, Terry, yep, I'm getting a majority vote yes. Sorry, Dora, was that, did you wanna to go too? Uh, no, I think that was me. Um, Terry, okay. the, the only other suggestion I'd have for the other vote is if you could stop sharing your screen. I don't know about you, Creel, but I could yeah. see everyone quicker. I would agree, that would be helpful. So when I, oh, oh, no, that's a, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, okay. Great. I, could, I could see gallery view and then I could just pass you. When I share my screen, you can also see the, the, the gallery that I'm seeing. No, I don't believe so. Okay, okay. Yes, you can. Cool, that's great, thank you. Terry, if um, people could please keep themselves on mute almost all the time and only mm -hmm. unmute yourself when you need to say something. It mm -hmm. really helps with the audio. Well, and we'll do that for the majority of meeting as the host just did now. So again, just be aware um, that we will use mute and uh, unmute um, and you if it's a portion of the meeting when you're intending to speak, you may need to, you may need to um, unmute manually. All right, um, so I think we have um, the, the yeas recorded. Um, are there any nays? So same, same voting procedure if you're on the phone um, or you know, phone by voice, uh, camera by raising your hand. Are there any nays on adopting the rules of procedure? All right. We're good, Creel? Yeah, I'm not seeing any nays, and I didn't hear any either. Um, 
Are there any abstentions? We'll just do this for all the votes. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, Okay, so our first item on the agenda is to approve the uh, minutes from the last parish meeting. So again, those were distributed in the, the meeting packet. Um, so this is from our February 2nd, 2020 um, parish meeting um, in person. So several months ago. Um, is there a second to approve the minutes? Either chat or verbally is fine. We will record that. All right, I have, uh, oh, we have many seconds. Let's see who was first. I think Rob Savage, Savage was first. All right, any questions or um, discussion around the, uh, the minutes from the last parish meeting? Sure. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see the voting more easily. Um, all right. So uh, again, same process. Uh, raise your hand uh, if you are on camera and uh, vote out loud if you're on the phone. Um, all those in favor, please raise your hand or say aye. Aye. All right, I'm seeing a majority. Um, yep, we're good. Please, please lower your hands now. Are there any nays? John, are you voting nay? John, we're on nay. <laughs> All right, the minutes are adopted. I will go back to the, I'll go back to sharing my screen for the next agenda. Sorry, I think I was on mute for a moment. Okay, so our next agenda item is nominees for the FUS and Foundation Board of Trustees. All right, so first up, uh, so with the, uh, we, we have bios for each um, nominee for the, the three groups that we are, um, that we are voting on today. So I will um, I'll refer you to that, to that packet. For, for the details. I hope you'll you'll read those. Um, you know, we have a very uh, diverse group of folks, um, you know, joining our boards. Um, and I will just um, scroll through these um, relatively quickly um, just to, to read through the names before we vote. Um, so first up, Kendall, Kendall Harrison. These are the foundation board members. So first up, Kendall Harrison, Carol Stang, and Kurt Stege. There's a motion to approve these members of the foundation's board of trustees for three year terms. I will stop sharing. Is there a second to this motion? I believe I that's, hmm. I believe there were many seconds. <laughs> I think uh, Parker Nancy Better Schultz was the first to, uh, to, to second this. I wish I had one of the listen things. I must have one somewhere. All right, is there, uh, please, 
please stay on mute if you can, unless you have a question. All right, is there any, any discussion um, on the foundation, um, foundation board candidates? All right, seeing no questions, I will call the vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand or say aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, please lower your hands. Terry, who? John, were you trying to say something? Okay. Um, are, are there any nays, please? Same process. Are there, there are any nays? Please raise your hand or say nay. Who moved it? Who seconded, please? Oh, well, the, the motion is from the, you know, it's from the board. Um, I believe uh, Nancy Vetter Schultz was the, the first to second. I don't see any names, Terry. Okay. All right. Motion carries. I will share my screen again. All right. We have. Um, uh, several folks either continuing or joining or rejoining the board. Uh, you know, it's interesting, we have, uh, you know, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of work and focus going on around the, um, the, the candidates for the ministerial search committee. Uh, but as we were thinking about the composition of the board for the next, uh, for the next year, for the next three years, um, you know, we're keeping a lot of those same considerations in mind. So we're thrilled to have several candidates for the Board of Trustees that are very connected to the congregation and you know, have, been, um, have been very active members. And I think they will be uh, real assets to our congregation as we move through the year that we will be in search. Um, so we, have, uh, we actually have this configured as separate votes for each person. So first is John McGevna, who uh, will be continuing as Secretary of the Board. This will be his second term on the board. And let's uh, so move to this. I don't know if we need to second each individual vote here when it's coming from the nominating committee, but um, we could. Oh, um, I'm just looking just looking at a comment. We could uh, try to announce when everyone's being muted and unmuted. I'd say in general, um, the intent of you know when we're administering the meeting, we're trying to keep everyone muted, except for when we're voting. And our meeting kind of has a lot of votes right now, so, um, but that, that's the intent. So. All right, so voting on John McGevna for Secretary of the Board. Thank you, John, for agreeing to another term. So all, Aye. In, favor, all in favor, please say Aye. Aye. your hand. Aye. 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 Thank you. Please lo lower your hands for this section. All right. Are there any nays? All right. Motion carries. Thank you, John, who is also taking notes as we speak. <laughs> Terry, you're muted. Yeah, I know. I keep it's a uh, keeps going back and forth. Can you hear? All right, I think I'm unmuted now. All right. So our candidate for board of trustees, president-elect position is Alyssa Ryan Joy. Um, very 
to uh, that she was interested in joining the board. So the this this position is a one year um, term as president elect and then two years as president. And I think Alyssa may be even more interested in governance than I am, which is a feat. So, <laughs> all right, so let's vote again. I will stop sharing my screen. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Go back and go like this. All right. Aye. Seeing lots of ayes. Thank you. Please lower your hands. Are there any nays? Nay. <laughs> the joke nay is that a real nay? Are there any nays? Are there any nays to record? I don't see any, Terry. I don't know what that was at the beginning. Okay, some noise. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, I, I believe there would be a round of applause at this point if we were in person. Sorry, I skipped over, over John, but yes, thank you. Thank you, John and, and Alyssa. And our final candidate for the Board of Trustees, Lorna Aronson, um, who many of you know, she is, uh, this will be Lorna's third um, time around on the board. So we are very happy she is willing to, um, to agree to, to run for the board again. Um, she's been very active on the uh, transition team, which I know was a lot of work. So uh, I'm hoping uh, board service might actually be a little bit of a break from the things that Lorna's been doing. So, um, I will stop sharing my screen again and we can vote on Lorna Aronson. All right, so motion to um, elect Lorna Aronson to the Board of Trustees. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. I'm seeing many, many eyes. Thank you. Please lower your hands. Are there any nays? All right, motion carries. Thank you, Lorna. Welcome back to the board. <laughs> hey, Terry, just a request. Can you give me just a couple more seconds on the nays so I can flip through all the videos? Yes, sorry. Thanks. Yes, yes. Are we good for this boat, Creel? Do you have everything? Yeah, we're okay on this one, thanks. <laughs> Okay. All right, turn things over to Monica. Um, for any comments about the 2020-2021 budget. Yeah, can everybody see and hear me okay? Hi, everybody. All right, let's take a just a minute break from the votes. Um, so we had a lovely and lengthy overview of this budget at the financial forum. Uh, but for those of you that missed it, I can try to give you uh, this budget in a nutshell. So in essence, the operating budget supports $1.8 million worth of programs and services that aim to support you in your personal and spiritual development um, and connects you with others who are aiming to be a force for good in the world. Thanks, Terry. That's perfect. Um, next fiscal year, the programs and services will likely look a little different than um, they have in years past, but we hope at their core, they accomplish the same goal. So we are very grateful for everyone's generosity 
always, but especially these last few years, as many of you have made both annual campaign and capital campaign donations, in addition to some unexpected close the, gift, uh, close the gap gifts. One of the many uh, outcomes of that generosity has been um, the $1 million mortgage pay down, which in tandem with the refinancing and the reamortization is saving us approximately $110,000 next year. The timing of that is especially helpful as we are projecting uh, approximately 60K less in pledge payments and about 18K less in unpledged donations next year. You'll notice that we're also decreasing our fund transfers by approximately one third of last year's amount. Uh, that's in large part because those funds are dwindling down. Um, we are budgeting 8K more in fundraising events, which will include an art fair, a fall cabaret, a Valentine's soiree, and a select to connect in spring. Um, and of course, there's both in-person and virtual uh, plans in the hopper for those. So the stewardship ministry team is getting very excited, very creative about their ideas for meeting that $51,000 budget goal that you see there. Uh, let's look at expenses for a second. Uh, as we mentioned at the financial forum, we have not budgeted for any salary increases for next year. Uh, this unfortunately will be the third year in which we will not see a cost of living increase for staff. Uh, we're obviously committed to reassessing that even mid-year to see if our, um, our financial outlook has changed at all. Our primary goal right now is obviously um, to keep, at least as an employer, to keep staff gainfully employed uh, and do our very best to provide a myriad of benefits, tangible and intangible, that support their well being. Uh, the $200,000 PPP or Paycheck Protection Program uh, loan that we received in April will likely be forgiven this summer. Uh, so it, it should show up as income in the first quarter of next year. And that anticipated income is not reflected on the budget that you're looking at now. Um, the Finance Committee will be drafting a policy uh, proposal for the Board of Trustees, hopefully this summer and fall, to help guide how we create, um, utilize, and hopefully maintain cash reserves in the coming years. So we'll be sure to share more information about that at the next uh, year's parish meetings. Uh, Terry, do you mind switching to the next slide? We'll take a quick look at the designated and restricted fund budget. Thanks. Um, so you can see we are, oh, got a little overzealous with the, the slide changing there. If you could go back one more. There you go, perfect. Um, so you can see we are projecting ending this current fiscal year with approximately 48K in that, um, in that account. We anticipate 18,500 in new income, spending about 2,600 in partner church funds and transferring nearly 18,000 to the operating budget to primarily support the music program. Um, so we'll anticipate uh, designated and restricted fund balance of nearly $46,000 at the end of next fiscal year. And then Terry, you can go to the next slide. Let's take a peek at the capital fund. Yeah, perfect. So things look a little different than last year um, as we enter the final year of collecting capital campaign donations and spending the last of the capital campaign project funds. We propose transferring 45K of support to the operating budget for the mortgage as we have for the last uh, half decade, give or take. Um, and if we receive the 230K in outstanding capital funds that were pledged, we'll um, have just under 40, uh, pardon me, 400K in the unrestricted funds remaining. As I alluded to before uh, in mentioning cash reserves, we are proceeding very cautiously with the use of those remaining funds. So we have placed uh, a hold on remodeling the glass walkway by the partner church area, doing a number of beautification projects in the atrium, um, as well as uh, buying a new boiler. So we propose deferring most of those projects until we have a date next um, so there you have it. Those are the three proposed budgets. Um, before we move to a uh, motion to vote, Steve Goldberg uh, or any other stewardship team member, did I, um, 
understand you wanted to make a quick plug for next year's exciting events. Sure. I don't know Where if I'm on or not. I found you in my list of people. Yep. You I look spiffy. Looking great in that tuxedo. Okay, well, these are my uh, stewardship event clothing items. Um, thanks, Monica. I uh, am proud and uh, excited on behalf of the stewardship ministry team and our uh, staff liaison, Cheryl Melanthane, to uh, just mention a couple things as we unveil the stewardship event season uh, for the remainder of this year and the beginning of next. Um, whether these events are virtual or in person, uh, they provide great opportunities to connect with each other at, while raising money for the place we call our spiritual home, namely First Unitarian Society. Um, we've got a whole bunch of events, but there are four that I'd like to highlight for you uh, this morning. Uh, one is the Food Cart Friday that we're planning for the summer. There'll be car hops in the FUS parking lot, so an opportunity to honor social distancing while enjoying uh, the food provided by local food carts. And this also gives us a chance to support local businesses, and we know how important that has become recently. Uh, another event for the summer is a drive-in family movie night. Details still de to be determined, but if we can pull that off, that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, in the fall, we've got cabaret, of course, but a new twist on cabaret this year is going to be a talent show. Uh, and the theme is FUS Got Talent, and uh, we're going to feature talent and special treats from uh, people here at FUS, whether it's singing or telling jokes or playing an instrument or dancing or all kinds of things. Somebody just asked if the car hops will be on roller skates. Of course they will, because um, we don't have to worry about shoveling the parking lot in the summer. Um, the uh, family movie night will be a highlight of the, uh, the summer season, again, if we can pull that off. And something we know we can pull off, as I mentioned before, is Cabaret. There will be a, an online auction along with the talent show at uh, Cabaret so that we can continue raising money for FUS. And highlighting our winter season, we're going to organize family caroling on Sundays in December. So how can you say no to this wonderful lineup of events? It's kind of like a Broadway preview brought to you by the stewardship ministry team and everybody else at FUS. Back to you, Monica. Thank you, Steve. Well, I think we're ready to motion to vote and then we typically answer questions um, once we've got a second. All right, so the motion here is on the screen. So move, um, we have a motion to accept the operating budget, designated budget and capital budget for 2020-2021. Um, I wonder if there's already a second in the chat. We'll check that. All right, we have a, a second from Mike May. And I will stop sharing my screen to call for the vote. All right, well, all in favor, oh, oh I'm sorry, discussion first. Uh, <laughs> so I know we had one question in the chat I just forwarded to Monica um, and we'll open it up for other questions. There was a question about the event, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, uh, rental income and how it could be increasing next year. We have built-in increases uh, contracted with Meeting House Nursery School and Sri Shamayam, uh, as well as a 3% increase of our parking renters. So we are, de we are anticipating a decrease in uh, weddings and meeting space usage, but overall uh, an increase is, is anticipated. All right, are there any other questions on the budgets? Yes, I've got one. Yes, Steve, you um, and the hat. Yeah, what's the, uh, what's the total amount required to provide a cost of living increase to staff? What's the dollar figure that we would be talking about if we were able to do that someday? 
Well, Steve, I know, um, just sorry, and Monica, but I know that we had, we had anticipating having exactly that discussion. Um, for the past couple of years, you know, we've been looking at, um, you know, really, really mapping out what it would take to, um, you know, to incrementally bring all of our staff up to, um, up to at least the midpoint of the recommended guidelines. Um, and, you know, that was the plan. Um, these are extra, so it was the plan to communicate that in a more integrated way. So we have, so it's integrated into um, the projected budget. Um, these are not ordinary times, and you know, Mo Monica acted very quickly to to get the uh, the federal funding we were able to, able to get. So you know, we're kind of uh, you know, it's certainly a setback, um, but you know, there are setbacks throughout our um, society right now. So, um, and so I just wanted to put that in just from a congregational perspective that that was what we intended to do. Um, you know, Monica, if you wanted to to. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see that uh, overall personnel expenses salaries are um, about 884000 So if you did a 2% cost of living increase for everyone, it would be around $17,000, $18,000. Thank you. There is a question in the chat, and I'm sorry, I've been doing other multitasking, so I don't know if you already talked um, about this, but Mike Goodman, did you talk about this, about Mike's question, Terry? No, I think, uh, Mike, is your question specifically about the budget? I mean, you're uh, asking about cost of living in general, but is there a question about the motion on the table? All right, if there are no other questions. Um, let's call a vote. All in favor of adopting the budgets as proposed, please raise your hand or, or say aye. 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 You look good, Terry. All right. Uh, please lower your hands. That's better. And are there any nays? The same process for any nays. Um, please say nay or raise your hand if you're on camera. Okay, no nays. No nays. Let's see All right. Thank you. The motion carries. Uh, let's uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your patience in our votes here. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to know how I can get rid of my space. It seems that I'm there permanently, and I like somebody else to be there once in a while. How do I get rid of that? There are settings to take care of that. Um, you know, maybe someone could. Uh, uh, send a chat message on advice to how to change the, the speaker. I don't know how to, I don't know what to press. Yeah. Um, I don't know it well enough to, to describe it right off, but I, I, I bet someone on the line does if they could uh, s send you a chat message. Car, car, it's yes. Gail Bliss. Call me. We'll talk about it. Thank you, okay. Gail. Thank you, Gail. All right. So next up, let me share my screen again. So Connie Beam is uh, here to give us a update on the foundation. Uh, I guess I will stop sharing so that we can we can see Connie. Okay. Hi everybody. Um, well, thank you for um, allowing us a few minutes to um, talk about the foundation a little bit. Um, in in these really uncertain times, it's good to have a foundation. <laughs> because uh, the foundation will provide consistent funding to FUS every single year, um, whether it's a good economy, a bad economy, no matter what's going on, the foundation will be there. And in its wisdom, FUS members made this foundation, put it in place many years ago. And uh, I don't know if you noticed that in the budget, there was a significant increase in funding for the 2021 budget. 
um, we had an, a $10,000 increase in our annual distribution to uh, FUS, as well as some other funds that rolled over uh, from last year that weren't used that will be used in the coming year. So we're really thrilled that the foundation has uh, been able to support uh, the FUS budget in such a significant way. Um, I'd also like to say a very big thank you to Tad Pinkerton. Tad has retired from our board this year and he's been serving, he served as president uh, for, and has been on our board for many years. And I really wanted to say a special thank you to him for his many years of service and to welcome Carol Stang. Carol brings uh, wonderful uh, technical and professional skills to our board and uh, we're really thrilled to have her join us. So welcome aboard, uh, Carol, and thank you to the congregation for um, voting her on to our board. So um, I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions. The, the handout uh, explains how, what our uh, finances look like and how we uh, determine what our annual contribution to the foundation, to the FUS is going to be. And uh, we work closely with uh, Monica and the staff and the Board of Trustees to make sure that that funding is always there. So uh, unless somebody has questions, um, that's my report. Oh, and I will say um, uh, that obviously we make our payout uh, calculations based on December 31 numbers. Um, and since that time, of course, the market has done not, not done so well. Um, but that's why we average it out over three years to make sure that we have some good years in there, some bad years in there. The average always helps to uh, maintain a, a fairly consistent payout from year to year. So FUS isn't dealing with a lot of surprises in terms of consistency of funding from the foundation. So that's it. Thank you, Connie. Are there any questions? All right. Um, I have, um, I'm going to back up just a minute. Uh, we skipped the stewardship update, and I believe uh, Monica has some information for us there. Terry, yeah, you were throwing up that one slide right before the foundation update. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Let me get to that. Terry was so excited to hear about the foundation. <laughs> I do like sharing, hearing about the foundation, but uh, stewardship's good too. All right, so in a moment, you will see uh, a slide on the current stewardship campaign and how it's going. Um, you will see almost. Can you? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. You can see that um, our budget target uh, for the budget we just approved is $1,110,000. As of May 30th, we've received 459 pledges, totaling $949,000. So we have $161,000 left to raise in pledges. Um, last year at this time, we had $203,000 left to raise. Um, so last year we had 513 pledges, totaling $967,000. So we do have less pledgers so far comparing um, this year to last year and about $18,000 less in pledge dollars. But given that we started our um, campaign a week or two before going to solely virtual um, services, uh, I think we're doing okay right now. And those of you that have not yet pledged, we do ask that you do so as soon as um, you feel comfortable. Feel free to reach out to Cheryl Mellenfein or myself. And um, we, uh, we're looking forward to another really beautiful year. Um, these funds help support that. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Monica. Yeah, it's good to see how well we're doing given, given all the uncertainty right now. Okay, 
So want to recap a little bit. So our, our uh, last formal agenda item is voting on our ministerial search committee. And this has been a lengthy process to, to get to this point. So, um, but today we will actually vote on our slate of proposed members. Um, and these are the folks who will work over the next year to go through the process to identify our next settled minister. So to back up just a bit about how we got here um, to, to recap the process, uh, we circulated a, an electronic survey asking everyone, members, friends, affiliates, to, you know, to provide names of people they would trust to serve on this committee. Um, so we had more than 125 responses to that with each person suggesting up, up to three names. So thank you for that. Um, we could not have done this without, you know, without that input. Uh, we did want as much input as possible in, um, in, in creating a pool of potential members of the committee. Um, so the next step was just, uh, just working with a spreadsheet, doing some data cleanup, making sure we knew who the names were, um, making sure they are uh, currently active members, and, uh, and kept the survey open for, uh, I think it was two months, maybe something like that. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure everyone had a chance to, uh, uh, to reply. And we did have, uh, you know, thank you to staff who also did, um, did work for us um, forwarding um, forwarding responses from those who, um, who were not able to complete the electronic survey. So the next step was for the board to do a couple different um, phases of narrowing the list. And the goal here was to, you know, to, to just see, I mean, we have to narrow it down. There's, there's no other choice. We have to eventually get to, get to a, a slate of seven committee members. Um, so the, the goal in the, the board's work was to uh, see there, where there was consensus around um, folks who are um, the best match for this particular task of being on the committee itself, um, with the primary criteria being um, you know, working well on a team and uh, people who can keep the needs and interests of the whole congregation in mind. Uh, so that um, we, we spent some time on that, on that uh, phase, just compiling our in input again, looking for um, looking for areas where we had the most consensus, and um, a a um, narrowed list of folks was um, invited to complete a written application. So we wanted to not, you know not just go on um, you know not just go kind of on perceptions and our personal experience because. Uh, no member of the board knew everyone on the list, so we wanted to uh, wanted to give people a chance to, to to really speak for themselves in a more detailed way and um, give us some information about um, you know why they want to be on the committee and how they would foresee their role in that work. And our last um, phase after this, so you know, re reviewing those materials, um, we had the board ha went through an iterative process of, of voting. And um, and also some some discussion to um, to come up with a balanced slate that was balanced in terms of perspective and personal demographics and um, and and skills for the, the they would bring to the committee. So just to say briefly, you know they you know, it, it's it's a small committee to represent a large congregation. So you know we will um, you know th there are gaps in the in, in representation. You know we can't uh, represent every group fully. We're a big congregation. We can't represent every demographic fully. Um, but one thing that um, you know that I hope everyone will feel good about we do have very broad um, very broad set of FUS experience. Um, you'll see if you've um, gone through the um, the bios of each of the candidates. Um, you know, very involved in um, FUS activities, a uh, variety of newer to longer term members, and uh, you know, we you know try to balance in many ways, knowing that we can't uh, have direct uh, representation of everyone. So we hope um, you know we hope that members will see them represented in see themselves represented in some way. Knowing that the you know, the goal for every member of this committee is to keep the needs of the whole congregation in mind and to and to consult the congregation um, throughout the process that we'll be going through over the next year. 
All right, so here's the, the formal motion. Let me just you know, read through the, the names and motion, and then we'll run through, the, uh, run through the bios. So if you haven't had a chance to read those carefully, you can at least see names and faces. And then we'll move on uh, if, there are any, if there's any discussion. So let me just read this. All right, the motion is that the following people be approved as members of the Ministerial Search Committee. Dorit Bergen, Emily Cusick Putnam, Sandy Esrich, Chuck Evanson, Jean Sears, Emily Smith, and Joy Stieglitz Gottschall. Is there a second for the motion? All right, we have a second from Dale from Gail Bliss. Oh, hang on a second. Let me. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. Uh, let me go back to share the screen. I didn't get to the didn't get to the slides yet. Didn't get to. And the there is a question in the chat regarding why there's only one male on the okay. docket. Okay. Okay. Um, let me just go through the the slides quickly. We have Dorit Bergen, Emily Cusick Putnam, Sandy Esrich. Chuck Evanson, Jane Sears, Emily Smith, and Joyce Deaglet Scott Shaw. All right. Um, so yes, that's uh, I, I'd say you pointed out the most. Uh, <laughs> So there, there are gaps in representation. Um, you know, that's correct. There, there is one. Um, there was one man. Um, I'd say the the biggest gap in in personal representation and demographic representation that we talked about as a board is um, there are there are no people of color on the on the committee. Um, at least as, as far as we're aware, as people identify, um, that was what we um, you know spent the most time talking about. Um, but in general, again, the, you know, we did, you know, the goal was representation possible, but the, the primary goals of the committee is to have a team that will work together and, uh, you know, balance of skills and perspective. And I would say, you know, your personal demographics, like who the people are on the committee in terms of whether you're, you know, uh, you know male or female, uh, member of the LGBTQ community, or you know any kind of those demographics, that wasn't that wasn't the primary goal. That was secondary, and you know that's that's just how things worked out. That we had um, a fewer men than women, um, and I would say you know how we got to that point. You know the the process of narrowing the list was iterative. Um, so we the the final list that we were considering um, had fewer men than women on it. Um, one interesting, and I don't have statistics like all the way through here, but uh, one thing that I looked at to try and figure out how we got to this particular point was um, if you look at who responded to the initial survey, um, it was 80% women, um, approximately. So, you know, when you look at, you know, where we're, we're balancing a lot of things and, uh, and knowing that we can't represent everyone fully, you know, there are going to be some some big gaps, and I'd say those are those are two of them. You know, knowing that we can't have one of one person from every group. You know, whether that's FUS groups or whether that's personal demographics. Um, I'd say once you, um, I'd encourage everyone to read read the biographies, and uh, if we were in person, <laughs> we could be chatting a little bit more naturally. Um, but you know, but uh, as you get to know the members of the search committee and interact with them over the course of the year, I think you'll. Um, find a very broad experience and uh, very capable to represent um, the congregation as a whole. Have Perry, other questions come in? Perry, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, talking about complete transparency, uh, it may have occurred to some of you that, wait a minute, Dorit's on the board. So, oh, I want you, you to know that um, as soon as I decided to um, fill out the application, I stopped having any hand in choosing the search team. 
I don't know who else applied. And I had, I excused myself from the board meeting when the discussions started to center on putting the search team together. Yes, thank you, Dord. I, um, and um, I, I should have said this, I skipped over this in, in the, um, in when we elected our board for next year. So um, Lorna Aronson is filling the at-large slot that um, uh, the at-large position that the door court currently holds. Um, you know, it's typically advised that you don't serve on the search committee and the board at the same time. So Dorit will resign from the board um, if elected to um, serve on the search committee. I would say, so one question I'm seeing in chat here, and, uh, and I think Creel is going to, to help kind of monitor chat as well, but um, I see one question about, uh, about equity and how that's um, integrated into the process. Um, you'll, you'll learn more about this from the search committee itself as we move through the year, but the, um, one of the, well, one of the, one of the um, uh, parts of the process is a, uh, beloved conversations weekend workshop and that is something that um, all congregations in search go through to just to open up thinking about um, about candidates that they'll see and, and, and to just encourage um, encourage um, you know focusing on the the work of ministry itself and not the demographics of the the individual in that role um, and I, just to reiterate again, you know, the, the work of the committee, if you're wondering, um, and I haven't read all the questions yet, but if you're wondering how the congregation will be involved, um, you know, the work of this committee is going to be to involve the congregation each step of the way. Um, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of, there's a lot of preparation that goes into um, that goes into the process before, you know, long before they're looking at candidates. Um, the first several months of the process are, are much more focused on um, presenting us as a congregation to the pool of candidates. Um, so, you know, that, that there's, and throughout the whole process, um, the, there's the, the balance of activity is much more inward focused than it is focused on, on the candidates. Um, so both need to happen, of course, but, um, but candidates primarily want to know about the discernment we've done as a congregation. Um, Terry, I had a private question come through that I don't know the answer to. Do you know exactly on the committee who has gone through beloved conversations already? Um, it would, I, I may have said the wrong thing. Um, so beloved con conversations is the, um, I'm blanking on the name of the, the workshop that, we, that we'll go through. Um, Beyond categorical thinking. Thank you, Doug. Beyond categorical thinking. I said, I said the wrong thing. We do have, um, rep, uh, I don't know how many members, but at least one member of the search committee has been involved in Beloved Conversations, which is the, um, um, the UUA or, or one of the UUA's um, curriculum for, you know, for thinking about racial equity in our, con in our congregations. Beyond categorical thinking is the workshop that's that congregations go through to prepare to be in search for their um, for a called minister. Um, so I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier. So, so to both questions, beyond categorical thinking, that's something the whole congregation would be invited to participate in as we move through the search process, and we do have representation on the search committee. Um, in participating in beloved conversations. There aren't any more questions in the chat at this point. All right, seeing lots of appreciation and oh yeah, and thank, thank you to everyone who has participated in any way up to this point. Uh, we have, um, uh, many folks who, uh, who who have helped out getting our um, uh, well, everyone who replied to the survey, and uh, many thanks to the board in 
in, in doing this and doing this work. Um, there were a lot of a lot of hands in this and, and a lot of focus. And thank you to all of the all of the applicants. Um, you know, fo you, it was very helpful to the board to have um, to have everyone's responses to the written application. Uh, would have been very difficult to to narrow the slate uh, without that. Um, it was still difficult with applications, but at least we were more informed in in how we could kind of balance perspectives on the committee. Um, someone's asking, yes, yes, there's someone from the choirs and the search committee. Yeah, the, um, uh, that slide I showed, that was just a, you know, a, the snippet of the, the personal experience of the, of the seven committee members. Um, I'm sure they've done many other things. I just, uh, things from the bios and um, the list added up quickly. Uh, question about Dorrit. So Dorrit, so the Dorrit's place on the board has already been filled. We just we just voted on that. So, so there's a plan. There's a plan for that since Dorrit won't do both at the same time. Hey Terry, I'm um, sorry I missed. Lori did have sort of a follow up to her question about the equity um, okay. issue. Lori, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> I have not um, been a part of uh, the cross categorical thinking training. So maybe it addresses all of this, but I, <clears throat> for everyone else, my name is Lori Schwartz and I uh, have watched as Madison Metropolitan School District has uh, proactively taken on an equity lens. Um, and I am grateful that there are very committed active people on this committee. My question does not, uh, mean that I imply that they cannot do this. I um, follow up with an intentionality question because I, I believe it has to be deliberate and a part of, um, by design, the, the search, the challenges facing us as a community, as a society, and as a world. Um, but Madison Metropolitan School District has everything that they do, and I've been in weekly meetings where they say that this is with an eye towards equity. And I realize that we have to have more things balanced in the, uh, the first Unitarian society, but I feel pretty strongly that we should um, consider what they do or something that intentionally by design seeks input in the process as it relates to the inequities within our community, within our first Unitarian Society committee. And as the parent of a biracial child and as a member of the Beloved Conversations, um, there are inequities, but there are inequities everywhere. So again, I don't wanna just yell about something and, and, and not have a suggestion. My suggestion is that we look at what other organizations are doing like Madison Metropolitan School District to have a clear lens to bring um, r racial divide and economic divide to the search. That's all. And I'm very grateful for the wonderful people that are on and put in and that those are that are selected as well. Thank you. Um, just a couple quick things um, in the written application. So, so the committee members in, in forming the committee itself, um, one of the questions we asked people to write about was um, their experience in helping create an environment of inclusion and collaboration. So, um, and so that you know, speaks to how we will be moving through the process as a congregation. And there are many, there are many layers layers to that, of course. Um, hang on, I need to plug in my computer so it doesn't die during this meeting. Just a minute. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, just to, to set us up for, you know, the types of things you're, you're talking about, Lori, I know, I know there, that, that question can be, <laughs> has a lot of layers in it, but just so how, how, we, how we work with each other in including folks in the discussion of moving through the search process itself. We wanted to make sure the committee itself um, is, is very agile and informed in, um, in being inclusive and consult consultative activities. One resource that will be available to them, um, which speaks to the you know, equity in looking at candidates, 
Um, ministers want the process to be fair to them as candidates, you know, because ministry is it's a calling, but it's also, you know, congregations are also employers. So, um, you know, the, the folks who will lead the Beyond Categorical Thinking Workshop, um, those same folks, you know, are um, the, you know, representatives from the region and the UUA, they will be available to the search committee, you know, to guide and coach them in this work. Um, so when you're, you know, talking about kind of looking at what or other organizations do, um, you know, there are a lot of resources that will be available to the search committee um, in, in that work. Uh, we also plan, we won't go into detail about this now, but we also plan to do a lot of work internally as a board um, to help support the search committee where we are too large a congregation to, um, you know, to just put all of this work on seven people. So we are going to be um, a lot more structured in terms of supporting the non-confidential work. Um, so holding focus groups, holding, um, you know, things like running the beyond categorical thinking workshop. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of work that goes on that doesn't have to be done, doesn't have to be, you know, completed by the committee members themselves. So that they, although they were, will oversee the work. Um, so we're, we're going to, to, to go into this knowing that we will have many more people involved than, than just the seven people on the committee. But thank you for your um, for your comments, Lori. There was a suggestion for something uh, called like a community advisory committee for the search um, that Doug added to the thread. I'm not sure what that means. A community advisory committee for the search. Drew, are you interested in expanding upon that? Ironically, he doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, Drew, I'm not sure. Um, okay, Drew's typing. And um, just an, a, another note, and again, I know I'm, uh, I didn't go into detail in, into the, uh, the backgrounds of the individual members, um, but members of the search committee you know, do bring extensive backgrounds in equity work. Oh, yeah, and, and Drew, I think the, um, uh, so, so the, the whole search process will build on the work we've been doing um, in, the, in the interim, and you know, the, the group that went out and talked to community partners, um, that, will very much, um, that will very much be folded into how we present ourselves as a congregation. Um, you know, there's, you know, everything's kind of a balance, you know, we'll, you know, some certain things wait, you know, if, if you're wait, wait until a new set of, set of ministers there, say, taking on a major initiative as, as a congregation, you know, that might be the sort of thing that would, you know, that wouldn't unfold during the, um, during the uh, year that we're in search. But the way we're presenting ourselves as a congregation um, to the search process, to candidates, to the, to the denomination, um, you know, a lot of a lot of the work that we did during the interim that will all play into that. So, you know, the, the interviews with community partners, um, you know, all of that information is certainly available to the search committee, and it will build. They will build on that as they, um, you know, as they kind of finalize our our congregational record. Um, are there other questions in the chat? Uh, Creels, anything else come in? No more specific questions. Some good some good additional comments in there though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, you know, we're not reading everything. There are, there are comments. If you're not following the chat, there's some good discussion, just comments and uh, appreciation for the, uh, for the folks who have, um, who have volunteered to serve on the committee. Just in the general discussion, I knew this is, uh, um, don't, don't want to put anyone on the spot here, but I would say if anyone, uh, if any one of the nominees would like to like to say anything, you're um, welcome to welcome to do so. If we were in person, we'd like have you stand up. <laughs> uh, 
I'll mm -hmm. just uh, say that um, I'm really excited. I'm honored. I'm excited. And honestly, a little bit nervous. <laughs> yes, and I hope that excitement comes through. You know, right now it's kind of, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have a very good committee. I'm kind of, you know, focused on the logistics right now, trying to trying to multitask and look at questions. But, um, you know, I, I mean, I'm excited. It was, um, you know, reading, reading what everyone wrote um, in the applications, it was um, really encouraging. We have such an informed and committed group. It was, um, well, I mean, I'm sure you can imagine that it was, you know, very difficult for the, for the board to narrow down and, um, you know, we have, we have, we have so many capable folks in this congregation. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it will be, um, it will be, it will be apparent when this group begins work, um, you know, just how inclusive this process is going to be. All right. Um, so are, if there are any other questions about the, uh, about the process, if not, we will move on to the vote. All right. So to approve our slate of members for the Ministerial Search Committee, all in favor, please raise your hand or say aye. It's funny the kind of audio feedback you get. And only during the vote. Sorry. All right, I've seen lots of eyes. Creel, I can't see. I look like you're yeah. still counting. I'll wait. Terry, yeah, Terry, I didn't hear any, hardly any eyes. Was did you unmute folks, or did I just miss that? I, di I didn't unmute anyone. Um, I'm, I unmuted everyone, but I can. Um, I. <laughs> we look good. Otherwise, I'm done. So. All right, thank you. All right, please lower your hand. All right, are there any nays? Please, so for nays, please raise your hand or say nay. Okay, I don't see any nays, Terry. All right, thank you. We have a search committee. Thank you, everyone. All okay. right. Margie and Pete. So same thing? No. Thank you everyone. Going to go back to sharing the presentation for a few things before we wrap up. Right, so nearing nearing the end of the uh, of our of our church year, we are going to be going through several transitions. So we're going to um, be saying goodbye to uh, to Karen Bernelson, who graduated with her MDiv this uh, this spring. So congratulations to Karen, um, and we will we will be recognizing um, you know recognizing Karen in a in a more formal way um, in an upcoming worship service. But congratulations to Karen. And FUS just wanted to share with the congregation that the Board of Trustees in our April meeting um, voted to co-ordain Karin in collaboration with the um, James Reeb UU congregation also in Madison. Um, so we are, so as her, um, as her student congregation along with her home congregation, we are joining together to co-ordain her. There will be a service of ordination uh, on Saturday, August 8th at 4.30 p.m. So everyone is at least invited virtually. Um, there will be more details on, um, on what, um, what, if anything, will happen in person. And 
you know, interim minister. And again, we will have a uh, we'll we'll have time to you know to thank Doug and uh, you know bid him farewell and uh, best of uh, best wishes for his next ministry. Uh, again, we'll we'll have some time to focus on this in a worship service later this month. Um, but just a, a little bit of logistics, Doug will actually be with us through the end of July. Um, and we have our next interim minister, Roger Birchhausen, he will be starting August 1st. Many of you may know Roger from his work in Appleton. He was the longtime minister of the congregation there. So much more to come, but just wanted to, uh, just wanted to share the, you know, the next steps of, 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 what's, um, you know, of what's happening. So Doug will be here through the end of July and Roger will formally begin August 1st. Right. So Kelly, are you here for some closing words? So these are the words from Linda Barnes. And she says, we're staying home. Love has never asked this of us before. We're staying home. This is our gift to humanity let us wish each other well. For those staying home alone, I offer you this blessing. May you grow a deeper understanding of your own worth. Dear one, leaven the aloneness with gentle care, for this too shall pass. May you be blessed with a peace and serenity. May you find the courage to reach out to hear another's voice and to remember others need you as well may you be well. For those of you staying home together, I offer you this blessing. May you find moments of patience and grace in your relations. May you offer each other enough time apart, reassurance and space enough to cry, to safely rage, for this too shall pass. Then let peace come again into your home May you see one another's whole self as a gift. May you be well. For those who are working from home, I offer you this blessing. May you remember to take breaks. May you find the means to relish your imperfection and the imperfection of others as evidence of our shared humanity. You are enough even when there isn't enough. Make order in your days and then let it go. May you be well. And for those staying home with children, I offer you this blessing. May you find humor and compassion in your days. There will be learning of a different kind, deeper, no doubt, unexpected for sure. May there be patience and forgiveness again and again and again, for this too shall pass. May you all remember the deep love that brought your family into being. May there be peace and understanding in your home. May you be well. May we be well. May our world and our community be well. May it be so. And amen. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks everyone for joining and hanging in there and as we figure this out. <laughs> Have a good afternoon.